when we're talking about beating man-to-man -man coverage, we want to focus on compressed sets, sets that um, you know you can get natural picks and rubs off of one another. With our base play being from the normal halfback week, this allows us some versatility and things that we can do. Because we motion the receiver over every single time, it allows us to do some unique things from our man beating set. So here's how I like to beat man from New Orleans. As we know, we like to motion Stokely across the formation pretty much every single play. Now what you'll see here is I can audible into the shotgun bunch and get right into Z spot. Very seamless, audible, very effective. Now what I like to do for my money, I think that the best way to beat man from the bunch is actually the PA post play. I've been really liking that play a lot lately. So that's what I'm going to break down. But you have all of the other concepts that I've broken down on my channel for the bunch. Every single concept is there. This is a really nice formation to beat man-to-man -man coverage because it works off of what we're already doing from this formation. Now, the way I like to beat man-to-man -man coverage here is I'm going to take Ray Rice. I'm going to put him on a wheel route. I'm then going to take uh, Dennis Pitta here, and I'm going to put him on a in route. You'll see then I'm going to motion over Rice, and I'm going to snap it just before he sets. He kind of freezes there, and I snap the ball. And you'll see that this wheel route does a nice job at beating man-to-man -man coverage. I'll make a quick look there. What you'll notice if you run that route several times is a lot of times you'll get people who start to try to user control that route. Well, what's nice about this formation is if they try to user that route, that specific route, it opens up the left side of the formation that much more, including against man-to-man -man coverage. That's why our second read is Dennis Pitta on this in route. Typically, you'll see, um, you know, typically you'll see some, something like this. Maybe they'll do from the dime. So we'll show you that, and we'll just audible right into it. But you know we're going to motion over because that's the way the scheme works anyway. So there's no real reason to show you that same motion every time. But uh, PA post, run the play, and you'll see that um, this guy that, that is going to guard Dennis Pennant is actually this uh, dime corner. So we'll playmaker him, but a lot of times you can actually like pass lead up or something, and you can beat man with that in route. Even though that in route is a mainly kind of a, a zone read, uh, it also beats man very effectively. So that's a simple way that we like to beat man from this formation. Um, two specific reads. Our next read that we're going to show you is right off of that because we're going to, what I like to say is we're going to glance to the right, glance to the middle, and glance to the left at three quick reads. So we're going to look right, le middle, and then left to Jacoby Jones. And this uh, C route is really effective for beating man to man coverage. It's very difficult because it's unbumpable and it works similar to that of an out route and a comeback route in combination. It's just a very underrated route in my opinion. It does a really good job for beating man-to-man -man coverage. And then uh, we have two more routes here that I want to show you. This goes back to that glancing over the middle. If you see that the middle is open, then you might wait and you'll see you got this nice post route from Brandon Stokely over the middle. That route is a very big time backbreaker route. It's a very good route and uh, it just does a lot for the offense in terms of beating man-to-man -man coverage. Here you're going to see that we're going to go to Torrey Smith on his little uh, kind of weird route. It's a nice route. It takes a long time to develop, but you have that's why we have those four other quick reads that we can hit. These are This route is for situations where they're playing a lot of max coverage defense. So maybe if they're dropping flats and a quarterback spy, a lot of people like to do that out of two-man under because two-man under coverage is really effective. You'll see that Torrey Smith is going to do a nice job when he comes when he finally gets going to the left. He'll get open. It takes him a long time to get open, but he is consistent. That's why we like to have all of these other reads off this play. But it's always good to have one or two routes that beat man-to-man -man coverage in a max coverage situation. You'll see another thing we can do is when he starts to shake, we can actually throw it right there, and he'll click, and he will uh, just main. Uh, you can click on and user catch that. It's a really effective little kind of. It, I I call it the route of shame because it's very hard to defend. Now here we're going to get into what we do when they call cover two. Okay, so cover two, same progressions, but what I like to do from cover two is you'll see that Torrey Smith is not going to get pressed out of the cover two. Rather, that flat zone is going to go to Ray Rice. So watch what happens here. Watch this. This guy's in a flat zone. Watch what he does. He does not press Torrey Smith. 
this is going to leave a void in the zone. Now, this is a crucial read for us because we need to obviously be able to tell, you know, we need to say, okay, he's in cover two or he's in cover two man under because they're beat completely different ways, but it's still in the same area. It's a still going to have a quick pass to the right. It's just not going to be to the running back. The running back is now going to be used as a decoy. They think to stop the running back, they'll use cover two, but what will actually happen is when they do that, we'll hit them in the little uh, tender area with Torrey Smith on that nice little uh, shake route. It's going to do really good against zone. I can't stress that enough. I've been running it a lot lately, and uh, it started out to be a little bit difficult to beat it. It started to be kind of one of those routes that you, you know, it's money half the time, but then you throw picks. But as I've worked with this over and over again, passly that down, it turns into basically a hitch route, and it's a very annoying pattern because it just, it's tough to defend, guys. It really is tough. And if you see a cover two defense, Take advantage of the voids of the cover two. The next void of the cover two that we're going to exploit here in this play is we're going to have our second read, which is this little in pattern. It does a nice job at beating cover two. The only route that doesn't beat cover two in this pattern is the couple of other routes, is these next two routes. These next two aren't quite as effective against the cover two because they're a little bit um, you know a little bit deeper routes and the way the cover two works this year it's really got pretty good middle coverage as far as deep you'll take a look here we're gonna try to throw to our our fourth read this uh, post to or this little C route out to Jones it actually does a decent job at beating cover two but I'll tell you right now it does not do a good job at beating cover two sink you have to really click on to that guy and really user catch uh, and, and force your way to catch that ball it's not a consistent cover two sink beater it's a fairly decent cover two beater but I wouldn't even rely on it to beat the cover two and then the final route that we are the uh, second to last route we have the Spran and Stokely route. It, it's, it's decent against cover two, but it requires very good user uh, catching. If you can't user catch, sometimes I struggle user catching this route. And uh, that's why I'll probably typically, that's why I've built in all these other cover two beaters in my playbook. But you'll notice it is possible. Pass like down the inside, click on, and you've got to get underneath the brow. So it's it will take a lot of time in practice mode, but if you get it, it's obviously going to make your offense that much better because it's that much more difficult to stop that route and then the final play that we like to or the final route we like to use against cover two is this little shake route you'll see that it's going to cut underneath the cover two as well and come in a nice little void it creates basically a levels concept for the offense so that is how we like to beat man-to-man -man coverage as well as cover two we know that a lot of people like to run two men under and cover two sink and cover two in this year's game so that's how we beat it out of our man beating formation out of the shotgun bunch it's a very underrated form actually you know i think the shotgun bunch is the most underrated formation in the game uh, people talk about pistol and buck sweep and trips and things like that but haven't heard a whole lot of people talking about the bunch in combination with the normal halfback week package out of the saints book i think it's a really underrated com combination of two plays uh, along with the rushing attack out of the tray open this motion of cross it is, is essential to uh, doing a lot of good things in this year's game so that is the man beater and tomorrow we're going to show you how to beat zone